Hi, class. I'm going to do my best to not leave you with some horrible looking faces um, when I hang up here. Uh, let's see, what do I want to say? This is week seven, and we've begun this week with some, uh, well, some rebellions of workers. The railroad strike and the shoemaker strike starts off as um, as non nonviolent, and the, the the railroad strike becomes more violent. And the one of the things that I want to introduce here is the fact that how the federal troops are called in on working people, uh, working people who are having their wages cut, but the bosses or the companies are making profits, or if they're not making the tremendous profits they were making, they're still making profits, but they refuse to give the working people um, a living wage. And not only do that, but in the shoemakers, what they decide to do is to let the shoemakers, the male men who are craftspeople, let them go and hire young children, boys and girls, as young as 10 years of age. Now, one of the things about the shoemakers is that most of those shoemakers became craftspeople by need. They were usually farmers or fisher people who at home, as a side trade, would make shoes. They would do the bottom of the shoes and the women and children in the house would do the uppers and, and all the little details of the shoe, whatever needed to be done, shoelaces, I guess. So when they started hiring workers in factories, those men left their homes and their farms and their fishing, and they went into the factories as craftspeople and started making the whole shoe. Then the women were hired to help the men in the factory complete the shoes. So this had become like a craft. And so they had been forced pretty much because of lack of um, being able to sell what they farmed or being or their fishes or whatever it might be. They were now factory people. And then the company, because of recessions or deep, I think they call them depressions, started cutting wages. And they cut the wages so much that the workers went out on strike. And so there was this big rally round and the women joined them and the children joined the men and they all went out on strike and they were out for a while and they finally won, uh, get the cutbacks removed and they went back to work. Some of them actually even got union representation. However, the women who had gone out on strike with the men, I think there's about 800 of them, and the children, 4,000 of them, who had gone out on strike with the men, did not get anything. So here again, you have this disparity. And of course, we're talking about primarily white males who became craftspeople through necessity, but they were like maybe second, third, fourth generation Americans by now. So as we see this happen, we we then have also at the same time the uh, the railroad strikes and what is that precipitated by wage cuts you will see not a different similarity now now we have people who are fighting desperately for the 15 hour which if we had an increase in our cost of living wages nobody would be making under 25 26 dollars an hour to survive in america today let me get back to 1877. So you have these railroad strikers and they are finding out they're getting their wages cut. And they just tell you at the end of the day, okay, starting tomorrow, we're cutting your wages. And so the firemen who are the main people, I guess they were the coal shovelers, um, got back, just walked off and then others walked off. And then it would kind of like went across kind of like maybe the first nationwide strike where railroads went out. And you, so you'll see as you read the information how the government, both our governors and our president, responded. And for those of you who don't know what the armories are all around the big cities, like in LA, there's a big armory um, out where there used to be a major Latinx population there's, there's armories 
And what the armories stand for is they've got all the weapons that they need in case there's an uprising, in case workers decide that they won't put up with what's happening to them by the corporate capitalist system. So this is a little bit of information that few people know about armories. Most people just think they're there to, in case there's a flood so or an earthquake. And they are have been used after the fact. But the primary reason for armories, the word to arm, was so that when the federal troops came in or if police needed to get in, in, into those things, there was arms for them to hold down the rebellions of the workers who were getting squished and squished so much with cutbacks. So that's starts this week. Now I also have in there about soldiers because I think it's really important that we remember that even though soldiers are considered military and somehow we consider that not a job because we sign up for it, we are conscripted, drafted. So th I put that in there because that, that it is a job. They are working. They are up in the morning and they are dying maybe before the afternoon. So uh, talks a little bit about the Civil War. Not much about the Civil War. There's something in there about Abraham Lincoln and what he thinks about strikers. I thought that was really interesting, giving his position about slavery not too much longer um, with the Emancipation Proclamation, which um, of course he did sign it to, to emancipate all slaves in the whole United States. Um, so. What was I going with that? Oh, I was going with that with. So I also put in there about Harriet Tubman. Now Harriet Tubman volunteered, but volunteers do work. Just because they're not getting paid doesn't mean that it's not work and that they should have decent working and living conditions. And of course, Harriet Tubman did not. And um, if you saw the most recent movie, which was pretty much a PG movie, that really didn't depict um, all the horrors that Harriet Tubman went through. Um, she not only did that, but she was involved in the Civil War and also involved in slave revolts. And so uh, that is, I would guess you would say, volunteerism. So those things we brought up this week, there's quite a bit to read, so I'm not giving you a... Um, a discussion this week because we're going to get into uh, next week it's going to have more to do what happened in the later the last half like 1878 to the 1900s of working people and it is just touching the iceberg with the shoemakers and the railroad strikes we're going to move on to bigger strikes um, and more violence against working people so what's happening now in Portland or what has been happening in Portland with Black Lives Matter with people standing up and saying, you can't keep on doing this. You can't send in the, the um, feds to take over our town. You can't continue to treat us like less than human. This has been going on from the beginning in the United States. And that is the main reason that I put a lot of this earlier information in. So we have a real trajectory of where we are now in 2020. Okay, enjoy the reading. I hope it inspires you. I hope it connects a lot of dots. I hope like your little synapses are going to and I will talk to you next week. Now to see if I cannot look horrendous when I hang up. <laughs>